Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on hyperspectral image classification using a 2D CNN. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about hyperspectral image classification using a 2D CNN, and it's going to be a step by step tutorial. Hyperspectral imaging or HSI is an advanced technique that captures images across a wide spectrum of wavelengths extending beyond the visible range into the infrared and ultraviolet. Unlike traditional imaging which captures three primary colors, red, green and blue, HSI collects data across numerous contiguous spectral bands. This results in a detailed spectral signature for each pixel allowing for precise identification and analysis of materials and objects based on their unique spectral properties. The integration of artificial intelligence, particularly machine learning and deep learning algorithms, has significantly enhanced the analysis and interpretation of hyperspectral data. AI models can efficiently process the high-dimensional data produced by HSI, identifying patterns and features that may be challenging to discern through traditional analytical methods. This synergy between HSI and AI has led to advancements in various fields, including agriculture. AI-driven hyperspectral imaging is employed for crop health monitoring, disease detection, and precision farming. By analyzing the spectral signatures of plants, it's possible to assess nutrient levels, identify stress factors, and optimize resource allocation. Environmental monitoring. HSI combined with AI aids in tracking environmental changes such as deforestation, water quality assessment, and pollution detection. Detailed spectral information allows for the identification of specific materials and contaminants in the environment. Medical diagnostics. In healthcare, hyperspectral imaging coupled with deep learning models is utilized for non-invasive diagnostics including cancer detection and tissue analysis. The rich spectral data assists in distinguishing between healthy and diseased tissues. Food quality control. AI-enhanced HSI systems are used in the food industry for quality assessment, contamination detection, and storing. They are able to detect subtle differences in spectral signatures to identify spoilage, foreign objects, or substandard products. A prominent AI approach in hyperspectral image analysis is the use of convolutional neural networks, or CNNs. CNNs are adept at capturing spatial hierarchies in data, making them suitable for image processing tasks. In the context of HSI, CNNs can be designed to process both the spectral and spatial dimensions of the data, leading to improved classification and analysis. The architecture of a typical 2D CNN for hyperspectral image classification includes multiple layers designed to extract and learn features from the input data. The layers usually include input layer, convolutional layers, activation functions, pooling layers, dropout layers, fully connected layers, and output layer. The input layer accepts patches of hyperspectral data where each patch is a small segment of the larger image. These patches encompass both spatial and spectral information. Convolutional layers apply filters to the input data to extract local features. Multiple convolutional layers can capture complex patterns by learning from the data hierarchically. Activation functions introduce nonlinearity into the model, which enables it to learn from complex data patterns. Pooling layers reduce the dimensionality of the data, retaining essential features while minimizing computational load. Dropout layers, on the other hand, prevent overfitting by randomly setting a fraction of input units to zero during training, promoting generalization. Fully connected layers integrate the features learned from previous layers to perform classification or regression tasks. Lastly, output layer produces the final predictions, often using a softmax activation function for classification tasks. This architecture enables the model to learn both spectral and spatial features from hyperspectral data leading to accurate classification and analysis. The data we are going to use is Indian Pines dataset. And you can see the RGB visualization of the data and also the ground truth. Let's go to Python and show you the code. So as you can see, I'm using Google Colab for this. First, let me show you the architecture of the network. I just wrote this simple code to show you the architecture. I just use matplotlib to show you the architecture. You can see that it starts with input layer and then convolution layers, another convolution layer, and then max pooling, and then dropout, and then another convolution, another convolution, max pooling, dropout, and then two convolution layers, and then max pooling, and then dropout, and then two more convolution layers, and then average pooling, and then dance layer, and then another dropout, and then the final dance layer. And as I said before, it's going to be a softmax activation function. And as you can see, it's a deep convolutional neural network because it has more than four layers. 
Let's go to the main code. Interestingly enough, to use Spectral Library in the Google Colab, you have to first install it. And you should use pip for it, as you can see here. If you were using Google Colab, if not, don't worry about it. But just make sure you have it installed on your machine. So I first import the necessary libraries, and then I'm going to mount the Google Drive, as you can see here. And it's going to ask for my permission, so you have to allow it to do that. And then these are the paths for my data. And then I'm going to be loading the data. This includes hyperspectral data and also the labels. And then I'm going to use PCA for dimensionality reduction. As you can see, I'm reducing the dimension to 30 components. And this is where the PCA is going to be applied. And then I'm going to be creating patches for training. This is applied to the PCA transform data, as you can see. And this is where we are calling the function create patches. And as you can see, it's being applied to the data transformed by PCA. And I'm going to be filtering out patches and labels where the ground truth labels are non-zero. We do this because in classification task, pixels that belong to no class, in other words, labeled as zero, can be excluded from the training process because they don't provide any useful information for learning the model. This step ensures that only relevant training examples, in other words, non-zero labeled patches, are used to train the model. Right here. And then here, we're going to be using 30% of the data as testing and the rest as training, as you can see here. And then this is where the model is going to be defined. And I've already talked about it here, the architecture of the model. 2D convolution, 2D convolution, max pooling, dropout, and again 2D convolution, another 2D convolution, and then another max pooling, and then dropout. Two more 2D convolution, another max pooling, and then dropout and then two more convolution layers, and then global average pooling. And then we ended with dense dropout and another dense layer. Here is where we're going to build the model. This is where we're going to compile it. And then this is where we're going to be training the model. I only use 20 epochs. You could make it more to have a better training results. And here we are visualizing the ground truth labels, full predictions, and mask predictions. And at the end we're going to be showing them here. And this is where this function is going to be called, right here. And I've already run the function, as you can see, only for 20 epochs. The accuracy and loss for training samples, and then for testing samples or validation. And as you can see, the accuracy is very high, considering that I only use 20 epochs. Both accuracy and loss for both training and testing data is very acceptable. And this is the ground truth, and this is the prediction, and this is the mask prediction. This one only shows prediction where ground truth labels are non-zero. This visualization helps understand how well the model's predictions ally with the actual data. And it can also highlight areas where the model might be struggling. But as you can see here, we've done a pretty good job predicting the ground truth. And I only use 20 epochs, as I said. You could make it more. You could also have access to the code using the link in the description section of this video. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and also found it helpful. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.